Hi everyone, Susie here and it is the middle of January and I'm going to be starting some more seeds and uh, I'm actually, these are new for me for starting from the seed and it's begonias and I got these from swallowtailgardenseeds.com. I'm not sponsored by them but they have an amazing selection of annuals and perennials which I get a lot of my seeds from and so I really wanted to try something new this year. The reason why I'm starting them this early is because germination can take 14 to 60 days. So the not it takes a bit, if any at all. And it takes uh, a heat mat and kept at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, pretty warm. So we'll see how that pans out for me. I do have a small heat mat that I'm going to be putting this on. I am starting the seeds in this is 72 count cell tray. Um, they're rather shallow cells, which I think will also help with getting that heat to the seed. And so I have labeled them I just by numbers and then I have numbers on the packet. So I have three varieties. And then I put on all the packets in case if I misplace one, but I just put the number up here so I have a reference to. I could have listed it on there, but to me, I'm just kind of doing it the lazy way, numbering it, and then whenever they germinate, I will label at that point. But this is kind of the way that I'm doing it. I'll let you know which varieties that I'm doing here real quick. So this is Illumination Apricot Shades. And this is a trailer. And so it's uh, large, semi-double and fully double flowers and shades of pale peach to deep cantaloupe. And then on um, heat-tolerant cascading plants. And there's 20 pelleted seeds in here, which makes it really good. I am doing, looks like, six rows of this one. I kind of have an idea where I want to put these. But then again, I'm not expecting all of them to germinate. So I do have two packets of that. So I've got 40 seeds. Granted, it's six rows of six. So I'll have some seeds left over. And then the next variety here, um, let's see, I did two packets of this. This is the Viking Pink on Chocolate Begonia. And this is large arching clusters of bicolor pink blooms. I'm hoping the pink is more coral color. I'm not a huge fan of pink, but it's also on dark chocolate colored leaves. They reach about 28 to 34 inches tall and wide. So that'll be fantastic. And this is only 10 seeds in here. That's why I got two packets of that. And then this next one just was really pretty so I thought why not try it not sure where I'm going to plant it right now but at least I can see and there was 20 pelleted seeds in this one too it's on top sunset shades begonia I really like the rich colors for planting I'm just finding I go more towards that the yellows peaches um salmon colors really really like that so I did only one packet and then again that I'll do three rows here just have to keep these together. And so I have my potty mix here that I have pre-moistened already. I do boil water and then pour it into the dry mix. I have it in a five gallon bucket with a lid and then I mix it up. I let it set for at least 30 minutes. This helps with fungus gnats. It doesn't eliminate them. I think it takes a lot to do that, but I just find that this has been working for me. So far, knock on wood. Um, that I have not seen any or had any issues. I do also control them with mosquito bits at some point and then also sticky traps, which um, I just get from Amazon. So they just, they're these yellow, they're kind of a pain to work with. They get stuck on everything, which is why they're sticky traps. But, but it does help. But I know last year I had a huge problem with fungus gnats, but it's also because I had used a different potting mix from a different company that I think that's where it came from. And then I have so many plants. Once you have an outbreak, it's really hard to get it under control. And I feel with these, if this ever had a fungus gnat issue with the begonias, I think they would just decimate it because I feel that the begonias are going to be, well, they take a long time to germinate. But also I think they're slow growers too. Even from when I buy the plant, they're very slow growers. So that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this tray here. If I find any big pieces, it's one thing about a potty mix that yes, you get big pieces. I just set it aside and then I just have an area or a bake that I put the spent potty mix in and then I'll use it in my containers outside come this spring, summer, 
but anything big, I just, I think I found a rock in here at one point. So just use your best judgment. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't think seeds need to be babied. I think if you do that, you're just setting them up for failure. Seed starting mix works fantastic, obviously, but it's just a lot more expensive. And so I do a lot of seed starting, so it's just not worth the, the price for me. When I first started seed, seed starting, that's all I use. I think it's Jiffy seed starting mix, and it's, it's fantastic. So, but, and I think it's best if you pre-moisten this because sometimes if you don't, um, your soil will just float when you go to water it. Also, it's not... When I squeeze it, I don't have any, I have a few drips coming up. I'm squeezing pretty hard, but it's still fluffy. I don't want it really saturated because I still want it fluffy to work with. Like I'll have big pieces like that, that. So then at this point, what I do, I just grab another tray here. I just set it on top and I, I push down. I'm putting a good amount of force on it, not too much, but I feel like this just kind of evens out. There we go. And then I'll fill it one more time. I'll just get that. are some big pieces of perlite in there too so again I just use my best judgment I mean if a seed wants to grow it's gonna grow except maybe not with something that big I think that's good it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just gonna slightly press down one more time. All right, you should be good to go. Right, I'm just gonna grab my shallow tray here real quick. Hopefully I can do this with one hand here. The other thing I like to do because these are pelleted seeds, I like to use a terracotta saucer because if I get a little too much moisture or water on my skewer here, at least this absorbs it rather quickly. I used to do it in my hands and then the drops of water would, and then it would roll and everything would bead and I just had issues that way. So I just find that this works the best. So this is the Illumination Applicant sorry, Apricot Shades Begonia. Comes in this cute little vial here. There should be 20 in each one, maybe. I'm not gonna sew all these varieties with you just because they're all sewn the same way. I think, I don't think you wanna watch me do 72 cells of begonias. I think this is, this will be really fun if this works. I'm also kind of trying to work a little bit quick here with a video just because my heater kicks on about every 15 minutes just because we're a little chilly outside and so it gets really loud in here. So I don't know if you can see all those little seeds. I like that they're yellow. And then I do have a little thing of water here, mason jar. And then I do have some vermiculite and then I do have a water bottle. So what I do is, I like working with the long skewer here. You can use a toothpick if you want. And then I just kind of tap off the water. If you hear that, that's just me tapping out on the glass. 
and then just pick one up and make sure that you can see and it sticks so I just do each one individually sometimes I can get go through a couple times so I'm not always touching the water I just shake it so I kind of spread them apart that way if I do get a little bit more water And that worst thing is if they all kind of go towards that one bead of water, they will, they'll just seize up together and then good luck. I think if I have any extra seeds in here, which I will, I'll probably just double up in a few cells because I'm not, I'm not gonna need, oh, I mean, be nice to have some for next year, but. And if there are some big pieces in the middle, I just kind of move it with the skewer. It is tedious, but it's really kind of nice just to take my time and enjoy this and think happy thoughts and the possibilities of all the plants I will have from this and how much money I'm saving myself. And just sometimes it's nice to slow down. I'm just so many times I'm just always watching the clock and no phones ringing as a plus. I'm just being by myself a lot of times when I'm seed starting I'll just have my music playing that got stuck on a piece of oh, hair so I've already got three rows done So let me know if you've ever started begonias from seed before and um, failures, successes. It's good to hear both. I'm honestly feeling like this might be a whole lot of work for nothing, but I have got nothing to do right now. I have a few seeds that I have started. I know I have a few perennials that I still have to get sown. But other than that, my major seed sowing is not going to start until about the first week in April. I know I've got a bunch of seeds I'm starting about the middle of February, which I will take you along for. And then, and explain why I'm doing them when I'm doing them. Because I garden in a zone 4B, so a lot of time, like this is super early, but if it takes 60 days to germinate, that's going to put me at almost the end of March. So I like a good sized plant to plant out, especially these are going in containers. So the temps here have been, I think, for like a daytime high, it was negative four degrees Fahrenheit. So which for Minnesota is actually pretty decent for January. And the low was, I think, negative 11, which I, again, is pretty decent. It's still cold, but my poor dogs, and they freeze up really quickly. But other than that, we have been, it, the weather has been absolutely gorgeous. We had a lot of rain on Christmas. But other than that, the grass was still green up until what, maybe a few weeks ago. And so it's been amazing. All right, I'm to, you know, 
I think I'm just gonna leave these few seeds alone, put them back in their vial, and maybe save them for next year. Maybe I'll have better luck than what I think. So then what I do is I'm, I am using vermiculite for this. I use this for everything, but I think for this, it's gonna work out perfectly because it'll help keep that moisture in too. It's just, this is going on a heat mat and I worry about heat mats with, they can suck the moisture out really quick. And the last thing you want them to do is for your seeds to dry out because that just stops the whole germination process. So hopefully this kind of helps keep that in. This will also have a humidity dome going on top, but I would say I'm probably gonna have to check. Well, I'll be checking every day on these just for that because it's enemy with the shallow cells. It won't take much to dry out. I'm just showing you this real quick, what I do, and then um, I'll finish sewing the rest. Like I said, I don't think you need to see me <laughs> do the rest. I'll also link the varieties in the description down below too, just in case if um, you had a hard time hearing me or if the picture was fuzzy on camera. But yeah, I definitely suggest checking them out. Maybe not for begonia seeds, but they have a lot of varieties and it's just, I love ordering from there. And then so I'll just kind of lightly pack it down just to make sure that the seed has good contact. Sometimes I don't like doing this because I really don't want the seed being stuck to my fingers, but I like doing that because at least it's just good contact is like a fantastic thing. And then I just have uh, my little bottle here with a bottle top water. And I do, I'm just gonna move this forward. And I hold it up pretty high and I just gently squeeze and water on top. When it needs watering again, I will bottom water. But this way, at least I know the seed is nice and moist and ready for germination. But I do water a ways of it just so I don't disperse that seed. Like this is plugging up a little bit, so it is, it is what it is. All right, so that one is done. And then I'll just show you, I do have this humidity dome here. And I'll just be placing on top. Um, it's, it's not too bad, it does shift a little bit. So I'll just have to make sure that that's not an issue or if it's hanging half off. But um, this will definitely help keep the moisture in too. Again, this will be going on a heat mat and that heat mat is plugged into its own outlet because I don't, that's gotta stay on 24 seven until they germinate. So yeah, so I will, I'm gonna get to finish sewing these and fingers crossed that I get some to germinate. And hopefully if you have started begonia seeds, you've had luck with yours. Again, I would love to know. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please hit the like and subscribe button. That really helps me out. And hopefully enjoy it and bye for now.